So the day has finally arrived to give my computer a facelift. And as you can see, it's pretty <laughs> awful. It's kind of ironic. I fix computers, I build computers, and I upgrade computers. Yet my computer is like total sh Well today, this computer gets a new case and a new Blu-ray player. Okay, so in the course of filming, setting up, getting ready for this computer upgrade, um, my power supply went dead. The computer is just dead now. And so now I'm going to have to buy a power supply. Uh, that wasn't planned, but I've got the case, I've got a Blu-ray burner, you now I have to get a power supply. Also, I was looking at my CPU cooler. If you can see here, it's pretty old. It's only one single fan, so I was concerned about that. So I think what I'm going to do is get a dual fan CPU cooler. So I'll get that, then the power supply, and then we'll start moving everything into the new case. Things happen. Um, power supplies don't last six years usually, so I was pretty fortunate to have that thing last over six years. So this was a thousand watt power supply. I'm gonna go with an 850. I don't need that much power. I think it's kind of a waste of money. So let's start with the case and then we're gonna work our way through all the pieces and I'm gonna show you step by step how to do this. It's very simple. Okay, so I hit the power button and nothing happened. The green light was on the motherboard and another light was red and flashing and I was hearing a weird sound. So I knew it was a power supply. Ugh. So I decided to go with a Rave Max Alpha Prime. I went with the white one. I had a black case for a lot of years, so it's nice for a change. For the power supply, I went with Thermal Take. Like I mentioned, the 850 watt is plenty. This is a modular, fully modular, so only the cores you need will be in the power supply. It's got some really cool colors, 256 to be exact. And here is the Blu-ray burner. Nice. This is the Enermax Liquid Fusion CPU Cooler. Has two fans and a bunch of lights. So it's gonna look great in my new case. Okay, before we get started, we're gonna have to clear the workspace, clear off everything off my desk. So I'm gonna remove all the wires, uh, devices, that cool little Camaro down there, stapler. It's a really nice stapler. Monitors, keyboards, mouse. As I'm removing all these devices, I'm seeing a lot of dust, a lot of dirt and grime. I'm probably gonna have to clean that before I start my, my build. Alright, here's the Raid Max. Now there's two or maybe three reasons why I decided to go with this particular case. One was the size. I like the size. It's not too big. Second was it's designed for CPU cooling, which is nice. And third, it just looks really nice. I like that tempered glass. And we're going to have to remove that tempered glass with the four screws. 
and we'll have to turn the case around and remove the other side to access where we're going to put the power supply. But let's get the power supply out first. There she is. Nice. And here's all the cords, all the modular cords. We'll use about less than half of those cords. Power supply cord. So let's go ahead and put the modular cables in that we're gonna need. I've already determined what they're gonna be, so let's start. That will go to the GPU. This goes to the motherboard. Now it's time to put the power supply in. The debate has always been, do you install it upside down or right side up? And I've always gone with, you install it upside down so the fan faces down. Install the four screws, easy. And then you're done. Let's go ahead and install that Blu-ray player. It's very easy to install. Let's go ahead and remove the CPU cooler for the old case. Should be an easy removal, it's only one fan. Four screws from the back. Should pop right off easily. Very dirty. Okay, let's unplug all the cords. We'll start with the CPU cord, the motherboard cord, the graphics card. We'll also remove any of the wires coming from the case to the motherboard. USB 3.0, all that stuff. Next is the SATAs. Anything coming from the hard drive or the Blu-ray player or whatever. SSD drive, operating system, extra cords, you can keep these or recycle either way. LED lights, I'll probably keep these, these are nice. Everything's been unhooked, everything's cleaned out pretty much. All you gotta do is remove this graphics card, and it's a very old one too, by the way. Can you believe that? 660? Wow, it's embarrassing. And I gotta remove this uh, tuner card here. Once I remove these, I can get the motherboard out, put it in a new, uh, new case. That's ancient. It's six years old, I think. To look on here for the year. It's crazy though. Let's go ahead and unscrew the motherboard from the old case. Now that top fan you see 
on top of that motherboard over there stopped working about two years ago. So that was another reason why I decided to get a new case. Okay, let's install the I.O. shield. Very easy, pops in nicely. Now this particular case has a fan in the back like most, but I discovered that I couldn't put the motherboard in because this fan was sticking out too far. So I had to remove it and then reinstall it after I installed the motherboard. And here we go. And of course, do not over tighten the screws. Just make them snug. An easy install, four screws. Make sure that the power cord for the fan goes towards the back. That's for aesthetic purposes. Okay, let's install this liquid cooler. This is gonna be a lot of fun. The first thing we start with is the radiator. Installing the fans on the radiator. I installed these fans to where the cords were on the right side of the radiator. Those are the fan cord, power cords, and the lights. But I later on had to reverse those because when I installed the radiator, these cords were kind of in the way. I want them to be hidden, so I actually reverse those fans later, and uh, it looks really nice. You can't see the cords at all. That's called good cable management. Next is the bracket. Now, if you have an Intel motherboard, this install is super easy. It's only four standoffs and four screws, and I recommend putting those screws and standoffs on the bracket first, and then putting it on the motherboard. I tried the other way and it wasn't going very easy. This is a lot easier, so just a little heads up on that. It's that simple. Next thing you want to do, remove old thermal paste. Now my thermal paste came off without any problem, but if you have any issue, use a little rubbing alcohol on your rag. Next, let's remove the front case and take out these fans. This will be where the radiator will go. It's kind of a shame these fans are LED fans and they're really nice and um, you can control them with a remote control. But my CPU cooler fans will be even nicer. Originally I was going to just take two fans out and put the cooler on top but the cooler is a little bit longer than the two fans, so I had to take the third one out. Just how it is. Again, each fan is four screws. It's easy. Unplug it and you're done. Now, to put the radiator in. This is six screws. Now I'm installing this flat to the bottom of the case. About a week later, I noticed a little bit of heat below the case, so I just loosened and took out the six screws and slid it up to the top all the way. And now it looks better and doesn't get as hot. Now apply the thermal paste, spread it evenly. Make it look pretty. And we're going to apply the CPU fan. Take that plastic part off. 
and put it on top. I centered the Intermex text to the top, make it look nice and Now let's just plug in the cooler. There's several plugs. There's plugs for the fans. There's plugs for the lights. You can see those cords are on the right side. Like I said, I will be taking those fans out and reversing those cords so they're in the back. All right, everything is pretty much done. I'm going to now just plug in the CPU cooler all those uh, components, I'm going to plug them into the motherboard. Then I'll plug in the power supply into the motherboard. I'm going to plug in SSD drive and mount it and plug those things in. And then I'm done. And then we're going to go to part two of the video, which you'll see in the next video, which is where I put a new graphics card in. They have a new GeForce. I'm going to upgrade it from what I had. It's a huge upgrade. So enjoy that video. And that's coming up next after this video. So um, I'm going to finish this up. And then thanks again for watching. Okay, we're just plugging in the lights for the cooler and the power for the fans. Make sure that's all plugged in. We're going to try to tuck those in the back. I don't know if you noticed that, the fans now are reversed in the back. I did it off camera. It looks way better. That's the thing with these builds. You're going to have to kind of trial and error a little bit. Don't be stubborn and stick with just one way. You know, if you have to redo it, just do it. And there you go. Plug that in. This is all for the lighting for the um, for the liquid cooler. This will go into the motherboard. That's the 24-pin connector. SSD drive. We're going to run it through the back and then the SSD drive will go underneath in the back. Power it up and then that will go back in the back. There we go. And there's the 8 pin connector that goes to the CPU. I'll plug that in. See how I ran it up top? No wires are in the way of the motherboard. And there is the wire for the back fan. We'll plug that in. It's power as well. And these are the wires from the case. The USB wires as well as the power, LED switch, the reset button, all that good stuff. Let's not forget to hook up that wonderful Blu-ray burner. Well guys, I'm finishing up here. This is part one of a part two. I wanna thank you for watching. Please hit subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. If you don't like it, leave a comment. Tell me what I did wrong or what you didn't like. I really want your input.